this. So God was wondering how things were going down here. And so he called on the Archangel Michael and he said, go down there, check it out and see what's going on, see how things are going. So the Archangel Michael came here and checked everything out and after a few days came back and said, it's really bad down there. It's really bad. And, and God said, really? It is bad. Only about 15% of the people are living in the spirit and who are living, uh, you know, your teachings and so forth. And he said, wow. And so then he said, okay, well, let me check into this first. So he called the Archangel Gabriel and says, I want you to go and check it. Just, 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 you know, I just want to get a second opinion. So Gabriel comes back and he says, he's right. It's bad. Really bad. Only about 15% of the people are really living in spirit and so forth. And so God says, wow. He says, well, I guess I'll have to send those people an email. <laughs> oh, you all didn't get one? <laughs> I still... I stole that one from Reverend Michael God, our senior minister. So, what do I want to talk to you about today? Kind of about the, this bat. I want to talk to you about the long bag we drag behind us. See, so you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. You know a long bag that we, that we drag behind us and every now and then opening up to put some more stuff in it and dragging it, you know? And... And, and, and how to let go of what doesn't serve us. How, how to let go of the unnecessary. Because, you know, tomorrow is New Year's Eve, and you all usually do that little burning bowl thing. So I figured I'd stir things up and give you lots of stuff to write about. <laughs> so my concept is kind of like looking at how we will pull into our future from the past what didn't work for us in the past. But because we are so familiar with it, many times we are resistant to letting it go. Is that about right? Amen. Yeah. It, 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 you know, it doesn't feel good, but it's not so bad that we really want to get rid of it. <laughs> Sounds like a spouse to me, but... <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself, Sheila. So, and, and then actually choosing what we want to bring into our future and shaping the future by what it is that we choose to bring in, okay? And so, I found this um, scripture, and it's one that um, I used to look at when they would do Sunday school and stuff like that in a more fundamentalist way, and couldn't figure it out, and then later, of course, when I got into the metaphysics, um, it started to make some sense. And it's the one about uh, new wine into old wineskins, you know? And it says that neither do we put new wine into old wineskins. Because if we do that, the skin will burst and the wine will pour out. So what are we talking about? Well, the wine itself is the, the lifeblood. It is the, the energy, the vitality that flows between the soul and the body. And the wine skin is our consciousness. It's our consciousness. And so, when we, if you, the reason that the, the skin will burst is because I'm not an expert on wine. I like it, but I'm not an expert. But 
is that when you put the new wine in, okay, it is going to be fermenting, right? And it expands and so forth. And if the wine skin is an old one, it's been around a while, it's not as flexible. And therefore, when you put the new wine into it, it begins to swell, to ferment, to grow, and it bursts through the old wine skin. The same thing with our consciousness is that we have shaped our consciousness around our experiences, what has happened to us as a result of what we've put out, sometimes in our misperception of what has occurred as a result of what we've put out as well. So many times our consciousness is not yet prepared for this new awareness, this new awakening, because it's been small to allow for the concepts that we, in our smaller wisdom, believe that we deserve. These, this is all I deserve. This is, this is all I can manifest. This is all I can create. So when we attempt to put that new expanded consciousness into that old realm of thinking and believing, it bursts. And it, it cannot contain that which we are desiring to fulfill and have blossom in our lives. Am I making any sense? Okay. Okay. So, what we are looking at, tomorrow is New Year's Eve, right? And normally we go to New Year's Eve and we write down the stuff we want to get rid of, right? And then we burn it, okay? Many times we end up recreating those same things again, right? I don't know, anybody besides me have done that? Okay. It's because we haven't prepared ourselves to be able to encapsulate this, this bigger self, this, this, this greater possibility, because we forget that we are made in the image and likeness of God, and that we can do all things through the Christ self that, in, that inspires and strengthens our abilities and our possibilities. Are you with me? And so we, we, we go to the thing and we, and we say, okay, now what do you want coming up? And we start writing this stuff down. But then we don't do anything to expand the place that will hold our hopes, our dreams, our desires. And so that is what I am inviting you to do, to begin doing this year. Let's do it a little differently. Let's not put this new wine into old wine skin. Let's expand our belief system. Let's expand our consciousness. Let's step out and dream big, but also do the things we need to do to allow the consciousness to become large enough to contain it. Am I making sense now? Yeah. Okay, all right. So, one of my concepts about how we do this uh, came to me some time ago when I, was, um, when I was writing my last book. And you have a handout, by the way. Yeah. Okay, oh good, you got it, okay. So I want us to look at the list.
All right. So let's look at number one. All right. And let's say this together. You'll be helping me because the light is shining on this. And all right, together. No, 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 no. The list. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stepping into the new year. Yes. Huh? No, no. Um, you got it? Yes, reviewing the current year. But it is numbered. Yours isn't numbered? Oh, you didn't get the, the email. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's say it together. Together, review the current year. By reviewing the current I want you to look back. I want you to look back over this year. I want you to look at what worked, what didn't. And I want you to be honest, okay? I want you to be totally honest with yourself. I don't want you to pretend something worked when you know it didn't. Okay, you know what worked, right? Okay, so review the current year. And I, and I want you to, to really look at it, my beloveds. Because I know that for the most part, we can look at what didn't work. Okay, but I want you to also look at what, at what worked. Okay, so review it. Just begin to look at it, review it, see what, what was, what wasn't, what could have been, whatever. You know, and this is not against the uh, metaphysical concepts we teach is don't, you know, don't, don't turn back to the past. No, this one you need to do, okay? Okay, ready, next one. Yes, what do you wish to leave behind? You make a list. It's kind of similar to what you do at the burning bowl, but maybe this is a little bit more expen ex extensive. Okay, what do you wish to leave behind? What do you wish to leave be behind in consciousness? What do you wish to leave behind that might be somewhere in, in your heart? What do you wish to leave behind from family dynamics? You know, family dynamics is a very interesting thing. <laughs> Can't choose your family. So. But, but what if, what if, what if, what if by choosing to leave behind a concept we had about Uncle Charlie that we've been holding for years and years and years could create a new dynamic in the entire family because the energy has shifted? Come on now, you're powerful. You do remember that, right? I told you that before, okay. So, what do you wish to leave behind? Leave behind that, that old idea about Uncle Charlie. Perhaps you might begin to see that what Uncle Charlie is expressing is a result of his feeling of, of being less than unappreciated, uncared for. Are you with me? Okay. So make a list of what you want to leave behind, but, but look at it a little bit differently, okay? Let's get a little deeper in it this time. Is that okay? Okay. And burn it. <laughs> no, don't burn Uncle Charlie. <laughs> because Uncle Charlie is going to shift because you're going to change your mind about Uncle Charlie. Okay? So Uncle Charlie is going to be like magic. Okay? So burn it. And what you can do is you can have two burning bowl 
services. You can have one at your home with your family and, of course, the one here at church. So, you know, copy the list and put it on your, you know, on your copy machine. It doesn't mean you have to write it again, but you can copy it. But, but you want to burn it. And as it is burning, what I want you to do is to visualize those things you want to leave behind. Visualize them. They're gone. And keep an imprint of that in your mind. That way you won't go back and pick it up again. <laughs> it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore, my beloveds. Okay? Yes? <laughs> okay, next. Everything. Yeah, everything that causes you pain, chaos, separation, anger, forgive it all. You got to forgive it. Because you see, forgiveness is the gift you give yourself. It's not for the other person. You do not have to tell somebody you forgave them. Because most of them don't remember they did anything to you. It's true. I did that with a friend of mine who had done something years ago. And I, went to, I saw her and I said, I want you to know I forgave you for dot, dot, dot. And she said, huh? <laughs> and I, so I told her the whole thing. She said, oh, you know, I forgot about that. I'm sorry. And I said, that's okay, because I've already forgiven you. <laughs> you don't have to tell anybody you forgive them. Just forgive them. Because it's for you. It's to take you off the hook. Because as long as you're holding unforgiveness against somebody, you're on the hook, my sisters and brothers. You are carrying them around with you moment by moment. Imagine if there's like 15, 20 of them. That's heavy. But you are, ca and seriously, if you have back problems, I think the, I'm not joking, I think it's, it's in messages from the body. There is something that you're carrying on your back. No joke. Yes. And so you want to you wanna get rid of this. So forgive everything. Everything. You know, you can even make up some stuff to forgive if you want to. <laughs> okay, next. This is a, this is a good year. What do you want this year? What do, you, what, do you want to, what do you want to be? What do you want to have? What do you want to do? You know, put it down. Put it down. Because when you put it down, you're imprinting it upon your conscious and subconscious mind. And what happens is that the universe begins to pick up the energy and begins drawing it to you. Make sure it's something you want, though, okay? Because the universe will bring it to you anyway. Okay? Do that. We're talking about really, really creating something big this year. I mean, a big shift in our lives, okay? All right, next. Uh huh. Create a vision of what you want. The, especially the larger things that you want. Get a piece of poster board and just start putting some things out of magazines or things you draw or whatever on that and have it in a place where you're going to pass by it every day. <laughs> and you won't be able to help but look at it. Guess what's happening when you're doing that? It's being imprinted. It's being imprinted. Okay? Okay. Next. Just say thank you. After you finish the, 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 the vision 
And after you finish your vision board, just look at it all of it and say, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am so grateful. Thank you very, very much for, for these gifts. I am truly grateful. And my beloveds, I'm talking about even if there is a serious illness that you are dealing with. Say thank you for it. Okay? Because the gratitude then begins to form that which will shift, will stimulate the shift in the physical ailment. Because, my beloveds, believe it or not, every physical ailment is a message. Every physical ailment is a message. And if you determine the message, you will know what you need to release or heal in order to change the dynamic. Book called Messages from the Body. Check it out. It's about that thick. And it has every ailment under the planet, okay? All right, next. Is that it? Oh, I thought I had, oh, my exercise is next, okay. So, before I, I get into this meditative exercise, I have a desire for you. You know, I love this church. And you are still in my heart. I want to see each and every one of you have the deepest desires of your heart. And that in the, in the, uh, the concurrent energy of that, that as you are lifted up, this church is lifted up as well. To the point that people are standing in line trying to get in here on Sundays, during the week, and whenever there's anything going on, because there's a message here. And my goal this year is to create a shift on the planet. So, I want this for you so badly, because you are my heart. This was, you know, this was the church where I became ordained as a unity minister. You are in my heart forever. So I want to see you be the focal point for the healing of the world. And I believe we can do it. I do. So I want to invite Chapel up. She's going to prepare us with a beautiful song, one of my favorites, and Carlos. Reyes and Dave.